Hello everyone, Demon Time Episode 3. Can you believe it? We've been here for three weeks. Don't mind the overlay, that is not got Jaeger. Xfinity, we all hate Xfinity. If my brother is watching, he can relate. All the, the amount of times it would go out and nothing would change. Like, no one would come for like a day or two. It's stupid. It's too expensive for how much it goes out. But... This is our good friend Adam LeCandy Bandits Cashif. Welcome to the stream. Thank you, thank you. So, how is it going today? It is going good. Just finished up my last midterms last week, so kind of taking a little bit of a chill. Um, just playing some Rocket League threes right now on the grind. No way, he's a Rocket League player. Yeah, not, not only a good Rocket one. League, you are also a league player. Yeah, League and Valorant as well. Gotta be the Azir and them. Victor, man. Yeah. Well, I guess, so, we talked a little bit before the podcast, but, like, the reason bringing you on today is, you know, obviously, Matt isn't here, but we are trying to get some different guests within it, and I thought it would be pretty cool to get, like, a different perspective of, like, our teams and, like, esports as a whole uh, throughout, like, you know, this hour, through in this time, in Demon Time. For sure, for sure. So, I guess, I, I kind of want to, like, I guess this will be more of, like, an interview more than anything else. Because, like, you know, uh, you know, last minute, boom. But, I, yeah. I guess when you were coming to DePaul, I know for me, it was, like, esports was a huge factor as, like, my own growth. Because, like, esports was... Um, I, don't, I guess like a prominent figure but i know you aren't playing competitively at the moment but like what entices you with like the whole program so honestly like i feel like i'm still learning a lot about what esports at depaul has to offer um i i mean i'm gonna be completely honest i didn't even really like wasn't aware of it most of my freshman year um but i feel like i'm slowly becoming involved um I've been to like the Rocket League tryouts for uh, this year's autumn and winter quarter, and so I'm, you know, I'm starting to um, see more people in that community. Um, but I mean, I guess if I were to go for a game, it would probably be League Valorant. Um, if I were to like really play a game, uh, just because those are the games that I've played for longer, I'm I'm still newer to Rocket League right yeah no i mean that's fair i know you're on the the come up on your ranks in a uh, rocket league yeah, uh, yeah. We are gold, <laughs> gold three div three <laughs> hey you're getting you are getting up there um oh, yeah. but I, I don't know i feel like it's definitely in some ways it can almost be daunting to like try or like figure out what one what game you want to play but two like what team you're gonna join i know it's like a different aesthetic and not aesthetic like vibe when it comes to like team dynamics at least between like esports i mean esports and like traditional sports uh so i feel like it's like a good way if you want to get involved you know you just go for some random team like you're saying you literally just went for rocket league which i remember when i i heard you're going to the trial like adam's going to the rocket league trial <laughs> like hold on wait a minute um yeah. so, so uh, hmm. yeah. no go go ahead no no you go ahead you go ahead oh okay okay <laughs> i mean i was just gonna say the one thing that i think uh is nice and i mean i, I can't really speak to other um of the esports divisions just because i i really haven't been a part of them but um i mean i just remember playing playing a uh, counter-strike with um some people from the cs uh part of the org and then kind of just i mean a similar uh thing with rocket league just kind of becoming you know more out there in terms of the community and and whatnot and i i just think one of the things i like about depaul esports is that you know yes there's a competitive aspect but there's also the aspect of just getting together hanging out and playing games and i feel like that's an, a very nice thing that not every org has oh yeah 100 percent. i mean i was thinking about it and like 
I, I think my closest friends at DePaul so far are from esports. You know, it's like, I, I'd say probably the one of the closest people for me is like, I mean, you know him, but like Alex, like I, I met him through Rocket League. We had a, a little bit of some funny times uh, here and there. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit of trolling. Yeah, a little bit of trolling. Uh, <laughs> and, and like, and then it's like you and Lane, another example, it's like, the people that I think I, I can trust the most and, like, the relate to the most and, like, I don't know, just overall, like, enjoy being around are definitely from esports. And even the people I've met on, like, a casual standpoint. Because I know, like, you aren't as involved with the program because you're not, you're not paid to be <laughs> as uh, yeah, involved. Yeah. Um, but, like, through, like, my own passion with esports, like, I have found, like, these different players, like Bobby, for example. And you got, like, T-Man and you got, like... Curtis, they're like these different people that I've meet in the center, and just because of this like commonly shared interest, regardless of competitive or casual status, people just kind of come together. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, as a league player, I can definitely speak to people being toxic and whatnot, <laughs> but I feel like most of the time, uh, you know, we, we handle ourselves pretty well at DePaul, and I mean, even I think really everyone that I talk to um, outside of classes has been affiliated or you know one way or another has been a part of depaul esports yeah. and so i i definitely i mean that definitely stems from my idea of just like the community and whatnot like i a lot of the people i know are from it so i know it's a good community and a good program oh for sure and i mean man i have talked about it in like the past few episodes but like you know, it's like interesting looking at how much esports is growing, like one at DePaul and within the country. And I don't, I mean, we don't really talk about it like outside of this podcast, like esports scenes, but I, I feel that, well, not feel, I know for a fact that like just esports in general in Chicago is very weak. And it's yeah. just like there's no, you know, you don't have any major orgs who are out here. They're all like Texas, Florida, California. Um, and like, the Midwest it just doesn't have as big of a scene, which is like, God. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I know one of, one of my friends uh, who goes to UIC is on one of the uh, Rocket League teams for UIC and whatnot. And I just like same thing with him. I think I've only really seen him go to like one LAN, um, the, like the entire time that he's been there so far. Um, and he's still a freshman, so like you know. But it's just you know something to notice. And I also think that it's like curious that like maybe just like a, a great example right now would be like rocket league since i'm playing it and just like <laughs> seeing how this could be transferred to more of a like a global uh, globally recognized thing versus then you know like a small niche of gamers right yeah and i i mean like maggie brings up a point in chat like that her and i have talked about she's like in it educated me a lot on how unprepared i guess chicago is to like be a, a good uh esports hub but like you know other than like these players being like some niche group of players it, it's like there's a solid community for almost every game i mean like the fact that there are beat saber teams like a vr game like it, it's a really good rhythm game like 100 percent. but the fact that like the community like an esports community collegiate scene is as strong as it is it's just like it's almost mind-boggling like there are people that, that see that it exists but there's almost like there aren't the right resources being used because it's like there's you look at all the pro teams uh like this outside collegiate just pro teams in general I mean, like, G2, FaZe, Cloud9, whatever. Like, none of them are anywhere near the Midwest. And so yeah, it's, that's, like, weird. That's for sure. Yeah, I feel like... I mean, this is even going back to the the good old days of Counter-Strike back in, like, 2015, 2016 in high school. But I just remember, like, I've always, like... I mean, back in the day, one of the things I always wanted to do was go to, like, a, a CS major or something like that. Yeah. And I just remember that there was a kid from my high school who, I forgot which one it was, but it was definitely one in Europe. And, you know, and they went out to Europe just for a CS major. And I was like, you know, that would be really cool if I didn't have to drop a couple Gs <laughs> to go and watch, you know. Yeah. Like, it, it would be nice. And, and I feel like Chicago is a great place to do it. I mean, it's it's one of the biggest cities in the country. Like, 
I don't see why it couldn't become a hub for for esports and whatnot. I just think that you know, as long as we are continuing to work on it, you know, through you know funding and you know people like to do it and whatnot. I mean, I definitely think that it'll, it'll be something that will become more prominent as you know time unfolds. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And as far as like the point with uh, it being expensive to go out, I know uh, some of the Rocket League people like they were talking about going to um, like the land that they're having in LA. And like I look at it and it's like I mean I go out to LA from time to time because of family and friends out there, but like it's expensive. Like even to, within the nation, I mean like a plane ticket will be like depending on what days, but let's say like a weekend, yeah. it would be like uh like three four hundred for that ticket and then like hotel rooms if you don't know anyone out there and then food it's just like well yeah and you're also gotta take into account like flights are ch like relatively cheaper right now i mean they still even hit like hit pre-pandemic levels so it's just gonna you know be even more expensive if you can even believe that you know yeah you know so. it's really funny um before uh covid like i think January or February of 2020, um, I was in like my AP Lang class, and uh, we were talking about like the plane ticket prices. I remember looking like a flight to LA was like 70 or 80 bucks through like uh, United Airlines, and I'm really? like, I was like, holy moly! Um, <laughs> and, and like now, like the tickets, I mean, they're still yeah, I agree, they're cheaper, but still, I mean, it's expensive unless you're flying Spirit, putting you know a yeah. couple hundred <laughs> into a plane ticket. It's, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, flights are not the cheapest thing in the world. No, that's, that's, no, that's for sure. But I mean, yeah, just but going back to like the Chicago thing, I mean, I definitely think that that as time goes on, people will people i feel like gaming in you know in, in a broader sense has a lot of support in the first place i mean you know you've you've got a wide range of people and even like the stereotypical like gamer is becoming you know less and less prominent i feel like i feel like now like you know anyone anyone can be a gamer yeah. and and i feel like it as more and more people feel comfortable as more people you know, become involved um, and, and as like the industry as a whole just starts to gain more traction, I, I definitely see see major cities across the country and really the world um, becoming you know more hubs. Um, I mean, you see all these you know events of um, you know football, you know, with, with the Super Bowl last week, and I and I don't I don't see it far fetched to to bet on you know possibly seeing you know a gigantic live streamed you know event of rocket league you know that's that's at you know has the whole nation wondering who's gonna win you know right so yeah. I, I definitely think that esports is it's still at its early stages it's crazy to say that like it's early stages because it's been around for i don't even know like the exact years but over 20 years i mean like yeah. you can look at the beginning like half-life and halo counter-strike um cod yeah for sure like some of these like backbone games and like to say like the day and age we're at with one the amount of like competitive players there are like the colleges you'll look at it i mean like they're I I remember, or you remember the Rocket League tourney I put together in December, right? It's this the snow day one. Yeah, like just the sheer amount of collegiate teams like I reached out to. I mean, I probably talked to like sixty or seventy collegiate teams, and I had thirty two different it wasn't 32 different schools it was a total of 32 different teams but i think like 16 or 17 different schools um and it's like crazy it's like all across the nation and there's even one from canada but it's like there obviously is a massive community of people who want to do it but then it's like oh wait where do we do it <laughs> Yeah, and I, and I think that's a that's a testament to just proving how much more it's going to become bigger in the future. I mean, if you've got if you've had that much interaction um, from people, I mean, you know, in another country, you know, you, you said with one being in Canada, yeah. I think it, it's definitely you know alludes to the fact that if, if if it's this big at this stage, there's no reason that it wouldn't become bigger, you know. And I and I definitely think that you know 
from from a like an economic standpoint whatever city whatever country whatever culture you know starts to really you know take in gaming is gonna is gonna prosper really well into the future i don't i don't see gaming going anywhere everyone likes to do it no what if i become like no more valorant and then i never play oh, valorant again no more never playing valorant again never yeah i know i know lane's in the chat she knows that meme um uh -huh. but uh yeah i i don't know it it's just so complicated because it, it's like really anything in the world if you don't have the money to do it like you just can't do it yeah that's that's true that's true but you know and hopefully this you know not a paid sponsorship or anything but i i definitely hope that this will help bring more awareness um you know, you know to gaming both at to paul but i mean just in general i definitely think that it's an industry that's going to prosper into the future and it's a it's a it's an industry that people can get behind it's an industry that people care about um it's an industry that just people genuinely like and you know and it, and it has a lot of possibilities um and so I just definitely think that capitalizing on such a tremendous opportunity for such a great amount of people um, is, is really important. I mean, what, you know, unless you can think of something, I mean, what's another activity at at school, at, you know, at DePaul or I mean, school in general that you think that it has that many people you know that are involved in it i mean i i, None. I can't think of... i'll answer that for you i don't think there are any i, I mean exactly. like uh, i <laughs> i love this conversation about depaul with esports because it's like for me i'm at a point where i like I, i'm just very just fed up I will repeat it again and again. I will be that person, like, that will grind it into, like, people's brains that, like, DePaul Esports, like, has so much potential because there's so much money to be made out of it. It's, like, hilarious when all these people who have, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I was going to talk something about, like, uh, education, but it's, like, wait, there, it's, like, basic business you see the growth in it there's exponential amount of growth and then nothing's being done uh i mean okay not nothing but like the yeah, people who know what's going on taken. yeah and it's like it's like mind-boggling that it's like with the amount of people it's like not seen in the same light as other things at the campus and i'm just like i'm like huh but yeah you know it has to do with the different stereotypes uh there's not right. like you know full like sports for example has like I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but, like, the professional staff members they have is just, like, massive right. compared to us. So, I, I don't know. It's it's a whole right. other feat, I guess. Right. And this will, and, and by saying this, like, and, and I don't want to be bashing on DePaul by any means. I, you know, it's... It takes money. It takes time. It's it's yeah. not... If it was if it was this easy, it would, it would not be a problem, right? It would be solved overnight. Um, and I'm not expecting it to be solved overnight. Um, I just think that it's, you know, it's something that should be in, in our societal conversations. I mean, I think that, you know, even beyond DePaul, any school that isn't really acknowledging that extracurriculars are going beyond, you know, the physical sports um, and that, you know, esports are, you know, you know, a thing, they're becoming prominent. I mean, I, I just think that schools are schools that don't adapt um, schools that don't fund, schools that don't appreciate their esports divisions are going to be schools that aren't as successful. Well, I think one thing that's interesting with that is like esports, honestly, it's not a, I guess, like, I don't think profession is the right word. It, it's not like a, like, job or whatever that is for, like, older, um, people like as older i mean like 20 and yeah. above because you see most of the like esport players like professional players retire in like their 20s mid 20s due to like how oh, yeah. taxing gaming can be but like we're gonna have like the more recognition i guess we're gonna have a like a whole generation of like cracked like rocket league fortnite yeah. csgo players because like when you're a kid you don't have to worry about paying the bill. Like I'm not. Oh, yeah, I remember the uh, the Fortnite, the world, like the World Fortnite tournament a few years back. Like there was this one kid who, you know, I feel like it was at least a million. Yeah, it was. It was, was, more, it was like, like a million. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like, dude, I could not imagine. Like back in the, you know, back 
because at that time, like, I was playing Counter-Strike, you know, at that age time, I was like, you know, I could not imagine getting paid a million dollars just for <laughs> playing CS, you know, with my yeah. brother. Like, that just sounds so crazy. Well, you it's know. just like the, these kids, like, especially during COVID, I really shouldn't be saying kids because most of them are, like, my age or, like, younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like... Yeah, they're one v one you. Yeah, you they, they were, oh, like, yeah. I could say all I want about them, but at the end of the day, they're still going to beat me. But, like, they <laughs> have, like, these people, they don't have to worry about a job. They don't, like, school's easy. Like, high school, like, unless you're in all, like, honors and AP all the time, like, school isn't, like, crazy difficult. Like, as long as you put in work, you'll get by. But it's like, especially pe the people who have like no responsibilities at home, like you already know like all they're doing if they're not like, if gaming's their thing, like they can put in yeah. the hours to it. So like these people, if they're support, could become just nuts. Like we would have yeah. a th like a million kids just all better than us at gaming. Well, let's say there was one kid, um, I used to, I used to talk to, um, from high school, and I mean, and he. You know, a similar thing. He didn't really have a lot of like outside uh, responsibilities and whatnot, and he and he dedicated himself to gaming a lot. And I feel like this also plays a factor. And it's the you know one of the nice things about esports is yeah, you know there are people who are just naturally good, right? And that, and that's going to be true for anything. But I think the one thing that's nice about esports is that first, no matter how good or bad you are, it's still enjoyable. And the second thing is that just by playing the game, you're going to get better, you right. know, and like with Rocket League, by no means, by no means am I good. You are amazing. You know, but uh, yeah, but, you know, and I, but I would say that I'm making, you know, strides to being a better player and understand the game more. I mean, and that's just by me playing it, you know, like I'm not taking any formal instruction on how to you know play the game better and so i you know i think that's also a nice thing about about esports and gaming is that it really does allow anyone who's willing to de dedicate themselves you know in the right way to to be successful you know at least to some extent you know you can get a high rank in the game not saying you're gonna be a pro player but you can definitely enjoy yourself you know and your career with a game and also, Regardless of what it is. I think it's, like, easier to get good at gaming than it is, like, for me, like, running. Like, the amount, like, gaming, I, it's, like, my computer's in the room I sleep in, right? Like, I could get on at any point if I'm home and just start playing, and, like, there's the YouTube videos, there's other streamers that show their way, and it's, like, it's so much easier to digest when everything you're doing is literally, like, just within your fingers, for sure, for sure. I mean, you didn't. You're never, you know, leaving your house to to play video games and whatnot. You know, you know, you have to sit outside in the cold to play video games. You know, right? Yeah. And I'll leave the and I'll leave the running to you, Jeremy. You you can uh you can run for the both of us. Oh, I would love to, Adam. Yeah, I would yeah, love man. to. You know, when when I'm a uh, world class marathoner, which that's not gonna happen but when i'm a world-class marathoner you're gonna wish you could be running with me you'll see me like cross okay. the finish line like wow this guy wow oh okay and, so, and when i finally get good at rocket league same thing goes for you you know oh I'll be, right I'll be, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be doing all the random flips and be like you know this this is for jeremy for the kid you know yeah, i'll let you do the flips I, i'll pass out on the flips you know oh, okay okay you're, you just gotta be a good kid yeah, I'm not. I'm not a good kid anymore. My good yeah. kid status has been removed. Yeah, if I if I become a pro rocket league player, you can't be calling me kid. I'm gonna have to. I'll, I'll be. I'll be the one one v one of you then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. When that happens, uh, you know, I think. Uh, uh, I, think I think you'll never be playing rocket league. Yeah, again. I'll, I'll never be playing rocket league again. <laughs> the day the day that happens, I will uninstall the game for the thirteenth oh. time. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but I, I guess to not stray away too far from everything, um, mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, like, esports just lead, like, just across the board from, like, everyone, like, more recognition. I think there needs to be, like, a a level of education on it because I, I think it's interesting when you look at like a little bit of the history of like gaming and like a lot of people had a lot of negative stigmas due to like games like when Doom came out Doom was like it pioneered FPS's but at the same time people are like oh there's a devil there's ha uh, hell like we 
we don't want our kids playing with that. And then it was also associated with like that 80s and 90s, or I guess from the 70s, yeah. like that rebel aesthetic. For sure. Um, and then you eventually get to like the early 2000s and like Postal, that whole series comes out and it relights that whole fire on like gaming is really bad. Um, so I, I don't know. I feel like we're, we're getting further away from it, but I, I think the stigmas behind it kind of hold it from getting to where it could be. Yeah, no, if, like I said, if it was that easy, it would be fixed overnight. I, I definitely think that it's it's a thing that will take time, but I think that investing in in the future is, is something that's important. Um, yeah. And then, then that goes with anything. Yeah, no, but. definitely. I mean, like, it, it's like a stock, you know? It only goes yeah. up, you know? Oh, and, yeah. Um, yeah tell that to this past week. You, I, you know, I'm really glad. I haven't looked at my stocks in uh, about oh, two weeks, good. so I'm I'm oh. not... Yeah, you, you, know. picked, you, you picked a good week not to look. <laughs> yeah, but I, I feel like there, once esports gets, like, the right amount of funding, like, and there's enough of that recogn I'm, uh, recognition, I'm interested to see kind of where it goes. Because yeah. no one knows, like with technology where it's going and like how we're advancing as a society. Who knows? Like the metaverse could be a uh, the the next big esport. We're playing dodgeball in a uh, in the metaverse. Yeah. Well, a, and okay. I mean, this is this is a little bit of a stretch, um, but I just remember I was reading uh, news because I I was looking at investing in Intel. Yeah. And I saw that, uh, well, actually, there's, there's, there's two parts to it. But So the first thing was, I was looking at investing in Intel, and I saw that, unfortunately, they had delayed it, but they are actually working on a processor um, for mining so that people will stop, you know, using graphics cards. And I'm not, not making a, a point about mining, but the point I'm trying to make is, if these things are a thousand times faster than any graphics card is in terms of processing power, like I'm just wondering, you know, to what extent are, are we really going to be able to utilize computers? I mean, just imagine your current, you know, processor and your computer being a thousand times more pro, you know, more powerful. I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. And even, um, Nvidia had its earnings on, uh, on Monday, I believe. Monday or Tuesday, one of the, one of these past few days, they had their earnings, um, and you know they had they they even beat their earnings forecasts, um, and so I think that really really shows that you know people are people are getting into it. You know, Nvidia wouldn't be making money if graphics cards and gaming w wasn't going up. You know, and, right, yeah. and I just I feel like you know. In, you know, specific to the industry, there's a lot of good things that are coming that you just don't necessarily hear about, you know, on your everyday, you know, t tasks or whatever. Um, but, you know, I, I just feel like there's a lot of stuff that's going on behind the scenes, uh, you know, that's just going to take some time. Um, but I, I definitely think there's good stuff coming for gaming going into the future. And I don't think, you know, it says as cheesy as people you know thinking of the future of oh you know we're gonna be in the metaverse like you know like i i honestly think it's gonna happen i mean we're not far away if we went through a pandemic of being online for two years we can you know we can definitely keep keep it going that way you know i had no clue about that whole intel thing that's actually wild yeah uh... so they yeah yeah they delayed it until 2023, which is kind of unfortunate. Oh, um, really? Like, like just the fact that you know it's even a thing like that. I, that should say something. I mean, I just I couldn't you know imagine a thousand times faster than what we have right now. I mean, that just sounds so hard to to even wrap my head around. You know, imagine rendering a video and like you know an hour long video in like you know five seconds. I mean, right. That's just crazy. Well, I think it'll be interesting as far as, like, with this, uh, what's the word, like, increase in power, like, where almost, like, gaming will go as far as, like, esports, because, like, you know, the more powerful things become, and then eventually it'll become more accessible, and it'll allow games to become more and more complicated and diverse if people want that, and I think that'll create an interesting avenue, because, I mean, like, we have games, I mean, Rocket League, CSGO, Valorant, Overwatch, um... 
league. It, it's like almost like a there's a base cookie cutter formula for what it's gonna be like FPS, for example, and then they add their own little like spice to it. But yeah, that's about well, and it. I think and even and even beyond like the physical games. I mean, one thing that I've I've really started to become involved. Oh, sorry, I just did a really good play in Rocket League. Wow. <laughs> I, I kind of amaze myself. I'm gonna save that for later. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Um, oh, so just kind of like the different divisions. I mean, I know that for me and Lane, we've we've started to get in uh, into like keyboards, like you know, building mechanical keyboards and whatnot. And I'm, that doesn't directly have to do with like playing video games. But I think you're gonna also start to see these little more niche markets start to really you know rise up. I mean, NFTs. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like just like the, like this, like you know, 30 years ago, I feel like you know, no one. No one in the office was really thinking about how they could make, you know, a, a holy panda, you know, keyboard. Right. Um, yeah. You know, mod modding their switches and whatnot. And but you know, I think that that, in, while it's still a niche market, I mean, I just think that it's really, it's it's just another step on the evolution of gaming and kind of like th this culture as a whole. Um, I think it's definitely, you know, it, it shows that it's got some strength, it's got some power, it's got some numbers into it. It's got a, it's got a strong fan base who, you know, want to see it succeed and 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 truly do care about it. I mean, I, I definitely dedicate a lot of my, you know, hours to to playing video games and hanging out with friends and whatnot. And so, you know, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one out there who can get on and you know play games for a few hours with no problem. Right, yeah. Plus it's Valorant or League, you know. Then it's like about, ten minutes, then you're done. Yeah, yeah. Something, something about when I load up a game and I just see Riot Games on it, it <laughs> really, really doesn't do me too well. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a, uh, you know, every time I think it's a good idea, I'm like, I'm gonna play Valorant today, and then I play with you guys, and then I'm like, man, I shouldn't have played play Valorant that. again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, I, I definitely think it's I definitely think it's an interesting thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I like it, and it, you know it's nice. But yeah, I definitely like. I mean, I, I I can speak more to the keyboard market than others, but I just I just like the fact that there's these smaller things. I mean, even a year ago, I really wasn't too aware of like the stuff that was happening in keyboards and not that it didn't exist i just you know wasn't paying attention to it um but i just i think that it is also a testament you know to the prominency i mean i'm talking about you know or i heard about it from someone else you know and now i'm talking about it. i'm sure that you know uh, someone else is gonna you know it's the you know we're just gonna get passed on and you know as yeah. time goes on more more people hear about it more people you know become aware of it more people are interested in it you know yeah, so I guess, I don't know, time will really only tell what is going to happen, you know? For sure, for sure. But, you know, I, I guess from here, you know, I don't really have too much else to say unless you do. And I'm, I'm okay with ending things off a little early tonight. I was going to say, I don't got anything. I think we unpacked a lot of a lot of stuff today and got, got some food for thought. Food for thought, you know, and we'll ha maybe have to use that in the future. But I mm -hmm. guess this has been episode three of Demon Time. Unfortunately, Matt was unable to join us, but we'll be back next week, 4 p.m. We may have another guest on, Matt, for sure. Or at, hopefully Xfinity doesn't suck and um, <laughs> he's able to get on his PC. But as you know, this has been Demon Time. This has been Mr. Adam. And we will see you all next week. Thank you. Peace.